Hello again everybody and welcome to Test Flight and the MiG-15 Biz. The MiG-15 was just released in open beta. I've got it up and running in the sim now and we're going to take it up and see what it has to offer. And you know what the Test Flight series is by now. It's not a tutorial, but you're and I'm going to try to learn a lot as we go and it's also not a review. Although you'll be able to tell as I go whether or not I like certain aspects of it and you'll be able to judge for yourself what you like and dislike about the aircraft. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. And in this series, now... There are a couple little different things. I always do something different each time that I do a test flight series. This time I'm going to upfront focus a little bit more on the interface, the stuff that I'd usually do before I even record it, because after all this is for new players, and I want to show some of the stuff that I kind of take for granted in the interface and just when it comes to getting the aircraft into the air. And also, since I'm kind of limited on documentation again on this aircraft, I have the quick start manual that comes with the aircraft, I have the Russian language version of the manual is going to eventually come with this. It's going to be very, very good, but as of right now, I can just look at the pictures. Can't really uh, read much of it. So I'm going to make the order that I do things a little bit differently here. I'm going to get the aircraft into the air, do air-to-air -air and air-to-ground employment first, because I'm going to take my time and really try to figure the systems out based on the documentation that I have right now, which isn't much, again, and make the, the startup, taxi, and shutdown in that first uh, phase of it that I would usually do take a little bit longer because I'm really going to take my time and try to figure this stuff out and not just do step-by-step -step procedures. You're going to see about 50 videos in the next two weeks of step-by-step -step how to cold start, how to do all that stuff. So as you know, that's not what I do, or I try not to do that. I try to understand the systems, and for that reason, I'm just going to do some of the uh, easier stuff first and then take my time later on. I think... Uh, It'll be a lot more enjoyable for you, at least, as the viewer, if I do it that way. So, let's, so without further ado, now I have just installed the simulation. I have not done anything at all to the interface as far as getting the aircraft set up and ready to fly. So if I take it up right now, I'm not necessarily going to get the full experience and be able to control the aircraft. So let me first come into the options, and I'm going to go to the special tab. I've already been here to see what's here, but... This is the first stop. I go to the special tab, and then I go to whatever aircraft I'm learning, and th in this case is the MiG-15 BIS, and I see that I have these options available right here. I have one enabled, and it's called Auto Lean to Aim. What that's going to do is, when I arm the gun, or when I have the gun ready to fire, it's going to align my head with the a gun sight. So I've got that enabled. Show hints at mission start. I'm not sure exactly what we get. I'm going to enable it for this first mission, just so that we can figure out what all this stuff means. Show G-Load on screen. Okay, I'll enable that for now. That's not something that I would want uh, long term. Gun camera mode. Right now it's off. I'm going to... I have no idea what this does. I'm going to turn it on again just for this first little phase and first little mission that I fly. An AI helper at mission start. I have no idea what this is. Again, I'm going to enable it because initially I'm just going to take the aircraft up and set the controls up. And then, probably at the end of this video, maybe, I'm going to get into air-to-air -air and air-to-ground employment. So let's just enable all this stuff and see what all it is. Since there's no harm, I'm not really going to do anything in this first little uh, mini-mission anyway. I'll click OK. And usually in a test flight series, I would have a like a special mission set up with all the ranged targets and all the like, drones circling. I'm going to do something different in this one again. I'm going to just run this series completely from the instant action missions that we have here. So... Okay, so this one's just going to be all about getting the controls set up. So let's do the free flight, and I'll see you in the air. Okay, so here we are in the air up around Makop Airfield. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be able to fly the aircraft effectively until I set the controls up. So the first thing that I do, once I get into the cockpit, I hit Escape to pause the simulation, and then I come here to Adjust Controls. Now, I could have done this from the main interface, but I'm going to do it from right here uh, in the air since we have the ability to do that now. I have the MiG-15 BIS Real uh, aircraft profile uh, called up. That's what I'm going to be using. So first thing I'm going to set up are the access commands. Now these are going to be the pitch roll, rudder, thrust, uh, wheel brake, and zoom view that I set up in this uh, initial part of it. Now you can see that it automatically makes a best guess on what it's supposed to use for each of these things. Like uh, obviously for pitch, I want to use just my joystick, and it has the rudder set up as well. So let me just clear everything out of the rudder control except for uh, rudder. Now I'll come over to my joystick. That's got pitch and uh, roll exactly right. And I'll come over to my throttle, 
and this one is going to have a thrust. I also want to set the throttle up. I have a slider that I use for uh, controlling the, the uh, view zoom. So I click on that, I click add. I think I could have double clicked there as well. I move whatever axis that I want. Okay, that was joy slider one. It was already in use as the uh, target, gun side target distance. But no, I'm going to use that for this purpose. And I'm going to map the gun side target distance to my other throttle. I have like a, a side by side throttle. It's the Warthog Hotas. So I'm going to use like my left throttle to adjust the gun side target distance. That'll be like the equivalent of twisting the throttle grip as we see once we get into uh, air to air employment and using the gun sight. Now let me see if there's anything else that I want to do right here. And yes, there is a uh, wheel brake axis. Now I have a like a little paddle uh, lever on my stick and that's going to be uh, a realistic place to put the wheel brake control, but I can't map that as an axis. So what I want to do is come down here to flight control. Okay, actually it's under systems. So if I go to systems, now I have wheel brake on. I want to map that to an appropriate button on my joystick. It was already mapped to the exact right place on my joystick. Okay, so I've got that set up. Air brake, I want to... Now, a part of this, as we go, is going to be figuring out what the, I guess, most realistic location to map these functions to on the HOTAS, or hands-on throttle and stick. It's just my uh, just fancy word for my... Uh, joystick and my throttle which has a whole bunch of programmable buttons and switches and levers and a whole bunch of stuff but as we go we're going to figure out where the appropriate location on my joystick and throttle to map these functions are based on where they're located in the real aircraft because I want for my part at least to have the workload involved in flying the aircraft representative of the workload that would be involved in flying the real MiG-15 so if I have to reach down for a switch, I don't necessarily want to have that just at my fingertips. I want to, you know, have some work involved, you know, the similar workflow that would be involved in doing it. So I don't want everything just at my fingertips, but I want the stuff that is at my fingertips to be in the right place. So I'm going to leave everything else kind of as is. Hit OK, and we're back into the aircraft. Now, OK, now I've got uh, proper pitch and, yaw con or, uh, pitch and roll control. I've got yaw control with the rudder. Now you can see that my throttle is working, and you can see that my throttle twist grip is working, and that's um, increasing and decreasing the range that goes into the gun sight, which we'll get to here in just a little bit. Now, initially, that's about all that I really do. I also uh, just fly the aircraft around a little bit. After all, that's why we bought this thing in the first place, is to uh, fly it. So you might as well get some enjoyment out of it out up front, just so that you'll know when you get it into the air, how it's going to respond and how it's going to handle. And you can see up there at the top right, the uh, by enabling that function in the uh, options menu, you know I have that uh, G loading displayed up there. I'll probably, I will turn it off after this mission just so it's not distracting me. I think I'll have a, a fairly good idea of how many Gs I'm pulling, and it's not really going to uh, matter in the MiG-15 that much, knowing exactly how many Gs. Uh, it'll just be a matter of finding the right visual and the right, you'll kind of get a feel for how far you can uh, push the aircraft and what kind of performance you're going to get out of the aircraft based on your airspeed, altitude, and uh, just how you're flying it. So uh, the G-loading doesn't really matter, although I wonder, I think the reason that it's up there is that we, we don't have an accelerometer available on the MiG-15, so hey, no big deal either way. And you can see that even at, uh, at 4 Gs, I get that buffet. So I know that that's as far as I can push the aircraft at this airspeed, which is actually very, very low, 300 uh, kilometers per hour. Okay, now I've got, uh, I think it just uh, took a little bit, a little while for the mapping for my throttle to really kick in. So now we, get, now we have full engine control and I've got full thrust coming out of the engine. Okay, so up through 550, 600, uh, eventually about to hit 600 kilometers per hour. So. Okay, let's put this thing into a left-hand turn, see how many G's it'll actually pull. And see if there's any, like, adverse effects. Okay, 6 G's. Okay, they get into the buffet, 5 G's. It may, wow, it maintains speed very, very well in turn. 5 G's still just kind of pegged out there at uh, 550 kilometers per hour. Wow, okay, so that's um, going to be comparable, at least, to the, uh, like, the F-86. Uh, might actually outturn it a little bit. I have to. I have to do some more research and see exactly how the uh, the 63 wing on the F F86F uh, aircraft that we have modeled is supposed to perform, and 
relation to the Big 15, and that can that can be very very tricky to do. You know, you'll get conflicting information depending on what report or what source you're you're uh, going off of. A lot of just the uh, first-hand reports uh, can exaggerate performance one way or another, and then again, some of the really detailed prepared reports, especially if they're done by the aircraft manufacturer, can be a little bit misleading too. Okay, so let me put it into a, a dive. Okay, I think I'm going to peg out. Okay, there's seven G's. I think that's about as high as I'm going to get out of this aircraft. That's about what I would expect. I'm sure that you could get it into regimes where you could, uh, you might be able to pull more, but I think that you'll run into also just a, a mechanical limit based on the, the flight control setup with the, you can see you have the, uh, like the T tail up there. And I don't know if we have like a hydraulic boost to the elevators or if it's all done by feel. That's the that's kind of detail that we're here to learn as we get into it and start to dig into the manual. But, can we see if I can uh, pull off a split S at this altitude. This might be the uh, last thing that I do in the MiG-15 until we move on to the uh, figuring out some of the systems. Okay, so of course, yeah, you can, uh, yeah, what was I at right there? Not too high, maybe, what, 1,000, uh, yeah, 2,000 meters or so. Okay, so, and just flying it around and getting a feel for how it handles, which is, uh, I wouldn't call it sluggish in roll. Uh, I think that it would just be a matter of finding the right combination. I wonder if I can do like a, like a rudder assisted, almost like a little snap roll type thing in this. Yeah, so blending in a little bit of rudder does, well, has a lot of weird effects. Well, not weird, it is the absolutely correct effect, but... Uh, this has some adverse effects. So let me uh, let me try that one more time. They just ah anyway. So thinking about some other stuff I can do while I'm up here. I know that diving the aircraft was a notoriously dangerous thing to do. I've uh, got to go back and research what the limit on that would be. I would imagine about what about 850 kilometers per hour. You start to run into some compressibility. Uh, type issues, you know, just mainly uh, due to just the uh, shape of the fuselage and also the the way that the uh, that tail back there interacts with the with the air as it goes. And oh wow, yeah, at that speed, what am I at right now? Eight. I was about eight thirty, and boy, I can tell I just have hardly any roll response at all. It was a little bit sluggish uh, before, and right there it was just uh, barely controllable. Let me try that one more time. And I don't care if I crash the aircraft at this phase of it. It's just once I get into the missions that I really care. So let me just explore this real quick since it's just something fun to do while I'm here. And I also want to go and do some more uh, more control setup. So give me just a second here. Okay, a thousand. Try to pull out of this. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. Okay, they throttle in. And okay, I'll be right back. So there we go, I can already tell this aircraft is going to keep us on our toes. That was, you know, just an example of a real world consideration in the MiG-15 that worked exactly like I was expecting. I was hoping to be able to pull out of that. That was, uh, I think it was Chuck Yeager that uh, did like an evaluation of the MiG-15 at one point. And uh, later on, I remember it was in his autobiography, the story, but he ran into a, a Soviet pilot and got into a discussion about how the MiG-15 handled, and the Soviet pilot was just amazed that Chuck, or General Yeager I should say, was able to do the dive test and to explore that part of the aircraft handling and live to tell about it. So, this is very, very impressive so far. But now, another thing that I did realize that I need to do is finish out the control settings, because I was frantically looking around for uh, what, for my speed brake controls as I did that. So, let me go to the options screen, and I promise we're going to get up and do some stuff with the gun side, air to air and air to ground here in a second, but I'm having a lot of fun just doing the fun stuff that I always do once I get a aircraft started. So, I'm going to go to the MiG-15 BIS real settings, and I'm going to just um, go through here and just kind of peck away at set, uh, controls that I know that I need to set up. So, I'm going to come back once I get to the stuff that I'm uh, going to map. I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. And after digging through the Russian language manual for a while, and with a lot of help from Google Translate, I've got the control scheme figured out. Now the good news is that for Warthog, uh, Thrustmaster Warthog owners like myself, the control mapping is already done. So everything is already mapped for you in a comparable location on your stick and throttle. But I'll go through it real quick just to give everybody an idea of where it's at, and if you're using a different setup, you can 
kind of use this as maybe a guide to where you might want to put stuff on your own setup, and I'll have some illustrations up as well, hopefully to uh, help illustrate what I'm talking about here. So there were really only four additional locations that I wanted to go to on, on here. The first was under flight control. I have the elevator trimmer. It's a, uh, a two-way toggle switch, and that by default is mapped to the uh, throttle. Uh, it's the uh, China hat on the throttle. Now, we also have the aileron trimmer switch, but that's... I'm going to leave that not mapped so that I have to go to the, the cockpit and actually reach around with the mouse to get that one. However, the elevator is right there just for easy access. Although it's not specifically on the throttle, it's on the left console, but close enough that I think it'll be uh, a kind of a quality of life type thing to have it there, uh, quick access like that. Next up, we have, of course, the stick. There were four functions on the stick to map. In addition to the wheel brakes that you already saw me map before, we have the gun safety cover, and this is by default going to be the DMS up. We have the N37 fire button, that's going to be by default the master mode control button on the old Warthog. We have the N23 cannon fire button, that's just your regular trigger, and we have the weapons release button, which is the, uh, what would you call that, the pinky switch, the, uh, or the, the uh, not the switch, but the, the button at the base of the, the stick. So, all those match up with their real-life counterparts, more or less, so that's a good setup right there on the stick. Now, you also see that I have these same things mapped to the uh, my SciTech uh, rudder. I want to clear those out real quick before I completely forget about it. Now we go to systems. We have one thing here on the systems, and that's going to be the air brake uh, button. It's hold to extend, and it is mapped to. It's also on the stick. It's what I would normally call the weapons release switch. So that's already mapped for us. And then we come to the throttle grip itself. Now, we have three functions here. One is the engine start, push to start button, and that's the, like, the pinky button. It's the, uh, not the, uh, I forget the exact, uh, uh, name of it, but, like, in the A-10, it's the one as you're, you're gripping the throttle is right there by your left pinky. So that's the engine start button, and we have an engine start button cover that we can map. I think I'm just going to leave that not mapped. It's just something that you would use once during a mission, so I might even just uh, not even do this using the throttle at all. This might be something that I would just, uh, using the mouse, uh, do during the mission, since it's uh, sort of in a, like a not really a critical phase of flight. It would make more sense to me not to have it mapped in that case. And then we have the microphone button. Since I'm under the, I guess the realistic settings, whatever it's called, the sim settings or whatever, I have to use this function to initiate communications. So it's on the throttle, it's joy button 4, and that's the uh, same place if I were in the A-10 that I would go for communication. It would be the, uh, I believe that would be the UHF function. You would just go down on the uh, four position, like, hat switch. So that's how it's set up. It's very, very similar to the way that it is in the MiG-15. I'm going to take it exactly as is, and unless anything else occurs to me as we're in the early phases of this, I want to leave that about all that I do and just be using the mouse and be using the cockpit controls as much as possible. But let me put a break in the video right here, it's a good stopping point, and we'll get back up into the air straight away in the next video, have a look at the gun sight, have a look at air-to-air -air and air-to-ground employment in the aircraft, use all these controls that we just mapped, and then of course get into the detailed procedures, figure out how to do the startup, shutdown, takeoff, uh, landing, all the stuff that we need to know, communications, navigation, all the stuff that I do during test flight, looking not only to understand how to perform the procedures, and anybody can just go step by step and do it, but also looking to understand why the procedures are written the way that they are, and what's actually happening on the aircraft as we perform this stuff, and learning how these systems work. So that should be a lot of fun once we get into it, and thanks again for watching, and as always with a new series, if you are enjoying this, and if you like the stuff that I do, especially on the first video of a new series, do consider hitting the like button, that does help me out by improving the search results, kind of skewing in my favor a little bit, and also, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to see these as they come out, and leave a comment. Your feedback sure does help out a lot. So, uh, thanks again for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.